In this video, we're going to solve some specific problems using special right triangles. Uh, to solve a triangle, what it means is to find all of the side lengths and all of the angle measures. Uh, the angle measures in this are, for the most part, all uh, taken care of because we're dealing with 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles. Uh, what we need to find, though, are the lengths. For our 30, 60, 90s, I've set up each of these uh, with the same side length but in different spots. So the hypotenuse in this case is 10. The side opposite of 30 is 10 in this one. And finally, the side opposite of 60 is 10. Uh, all of the triangles, however, are still going to be different. Uh, and at the bottom, I've got some isosceles right triangles, or 45, 45, 90 triangles, uh, where this one, the legs, 10, and this one, the hypotenuse is 10. So we'll see different results there as well. For each of these three problems, I'm going to refer to our basic 30, 60, 90 triangle, which was explained in a previous post. Uh, so the ratio of the sides is always going to be 2 for the hypotenuse, 1 for the side opposite of 30, and 3 for the side opposite of 60. I'm going to use that here. All right, so if I look here, 10 is my hypotenuse. 10 corresponds with 2, and I need to find all the sides. So the 10 corresponds with the 2, and the 1 corresponds with this side here. I'll call that x, and I'll call this one y. Uh, we can think of this in a couple of different ways. These are similar triangles, so you can set up proportions. 10 corresponds with 2 is equal to uh, x which corresponds with 1, and solve your proportion. And then we can do the same thing using proportions to solve for the y value. The 10 corresponds with the 2, and the y corresponds with the square root of 3. So that would be solving this uh, triangle using proportions. However, there's another way that you can think about it, and this is really the, the, the quick way, the shortcut way of doing it, and that's to really look at the, how you go from one side to the other. I always focus on the side opposite of 30. If I know the side opposite of 30, I double it to find the hypotenuse. If I know the side opposite of 30, I multiply by root 3 to get the side opposite of 60. If we look here at this example, I don't know, well now I do, the side opposite of 30, but see how I double it, and I would have the hypotenuse, and I multiply by root 3, and I get the side opposite of 60. So looking at this one, if I know the side opposite of 30, I double it to get the hypotenuse, and I multiply by root 3 to get the side opposite of 60. I need to know this one as my starting point, but I don't. Because if I knew it, I would double it to get the hypotenuse, and I would multiply by root 3 to get the side opposite of 60. Well, I just have to think in reverse here. I'm not going to multiply what I have to get the side opposite of 60. I'm going to divide by root 3 to get the side opposite of 30. So I'm just using that same idea. Uh, if I know this, I would multiply by root 3 to get the side opposite of 60, but I've got to go in reverse. So this would just be 10 divided by root 3. Uh, now, this is not rationalized. It could be simplified, uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Then I'm going to take this and double it to get the side opposite of 90, or the hypotenuse. Okay, so to rationalize these, uh, we need to multiply uh, the value essentially by 1. We're multiplying by 1 because we don't want to change the value of this. We just want to change the way it looks. Uh, we're going to multiply by a specific one, a one that looks maybe not like the one you would, we, we would picture here, but we want to multiply by a value that causes our denominator to no longer have a square root in it. So anything over itself equals 1. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 over root 3 because root 3 times root 3 equals 3. And then 10 times root 3 is 10 root 3. And it's very similar here. Times root 3 over root 3. That is 1, so it doesn't change the value. I don't really like thinking of this as 
oversimplifying because going from 10 over root 3 uh, to 10 root 3 over 3 doesn't look any more uh, simplified to me. In fact, uh, the only purpose that I'm really seeing on this right now is uh, when, we're, when you're looking at the ACT and your questions on the ACT, they will all be rationalized. Uh, it's sort of something that uh, was more important back when we didn't have calculators that could divide by the, the square root of 3. So we've got our final answers there. All right, so that was 30, 60, 90 triangles. Again, the basic idea here is to identify the side opposite of 30 and look at the pattern for how we find the hypotenuse. The side opposite of 30 times 2 gives us the hypotenuse. The side opposite of 30 times root 3 gives us the side opposite of 60. And if we check that on any of these, that pattern holds. The side opposite of 30 times root 3, the side opposite of 30 times 2. And now 45, 45, 90 triangles. We need to look at our base triangle for that. Uh, 1, 1, and the square root of 2 for the hypotenuse. So if I know a leg is 10, well, the other leg is also 10 uh, because it's isosceles. Now, I know that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, even though it's not written there, because these angle measures tell me I've got an isosceles triangle. So this is an isosceles right triangle, and that would have to be 45 degrees each. Okay, so 10, 10, and then the pattern when you know a leg, times root 2 gives you the hypotenuse. Uh, the same idea of how we use proportions on this first problem, we could use that here as well. Let me show you that. So 10 corresponds with 1, and the hypotenuse is what we're going to solve for, we'll call it x equals x over root 2. So 10 root 2 is equal to x times 1. So you'll see that that's the same, same answer when we use proportions. Well, we can do that, of course, because these are similar triangles. All right, so when we look at this, it's 10 times root 2 to get the hypotenuse. So we would go in reverse when what we know is the hypotenuse. So take 10 and divide by root 2 to get our leg. Then divide it by root 2. And the legs are congruent, so 10 divided by root 2. All right, so 10 over root 2, we need to simplify that uh, as well uh, as we did there. So 10 over root 2, instead of multiplying by root 3 over root 3, I want to multiply by the version of 1 that is going to cause my denominator to, to no longer have a square root in it. Uh, and that would be root 2 over root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is... 2. 10 times root 2 is 10 root 2. And now this does simplify a little bit more. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that would be 5 root 2. So each of our sides here are 5 root 2. Uh, and the pattern still holds. When we take 5 root 2 times root 2, it does give us 10. All right, so that's some specific examples using uh, special right triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles, 40, 40, 45, 45, 90 triangles. There's really two ways you can go about these, at least two ways. Uh, one way is to use proportions and set up a proportion uh, comparing your triangle you're trying to solve to the base triangle or using the patterns that exist between the side lengths in these triangles. Again, the side opposite of 30 times 2 gives you the hypotenuse, the side opposite of 30 times root 3 gives you the side opposite of 60. In the 45, 45, 90 triangle, the pattern is this, the leg times root 2 gives you the hypotenuse. And then you 